So hello everybody, it is Power Week, it means that the Power BI Desktop team has released a new Power BI Desktop update. This time it is May 2020. Okay, so there are three things in this update of features that I really like. There are three that I really don't like. So let's get started. Let me show you what they are. Okay, so desktop update May 2020. What's up with that? There's a lot of reporting features and those are the ones that we're going to start with. The first one is curated tables for Excel. And here's some preview. First of all, you need to have Excel inside their build in order to be able to do those feature tables. A lot of people do not have it, so this is probably won't apply for a lot of you. But I have some questions about the implementation for this. This is one of the features I'm not so sure about. Here's the thing. You have to, you go into Power BI, you have a model, and then you say, oh, this customer table, I've curated it, it is good, I want to feature it in Excel. So you go and you mark it as a feature table, and then you publish it up to um, the service, and that's where, it, you know, Excel will go and read from. Here's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> this is what it, why, why would you feature a table on Power BI Desktop? For me, it makes no sense. So I am a developer. I feature a custom table that I created. My colleague is doing the exact same thing. He's featuring a custom table that he created. Suddenly, there are two feature custom customer tables. Which one is which one? And then it says here, well, the admin will have to give either the entire organization to feature tables or just a specific people. But if we both are Power BI developers, which customer table is correct? Why would you do that from Power BI Desktop? Wouldn't it make more sense to make it in the source? So if there is a, a table in analysis service or a table in anywhere that says that this is our official customer table, that's the one that we want to promote, then you do it from an admin perspective, not a developer perspective. So I don't... <laughs> I don't see how this implementation is going to work, but maybe it's just because it's too early or I, there's something I'm missing. Who knows? Let me know your thoughts in the comment box. I'm really curious to know how you think about this. But for me, it's, it's confusing, to say the least. Okay, <laughs> moving on. Oh, dear. Uh, the next one is apply all filters preview. And here's the thing. If you're using query reduction, which means if you have large models, you know, every time you click something in Power BI, it sends a query directly to the to the source. And if you have a huge model, that will make virtually impossible to work with Power BI. So what they have is this query reduction thing, uh, which basically means that you have to click apply, you know, you can do stuff and then you click apply. And that was valid except for the filter pane. So the filter pane didn't have that feature. So what you can do now is you can set all the settings and all the filters, and instead of them sending queries directly and applying it directly, it waits until you click the big apply button. So are you using query reduction? This is a great feature for you. I'm guessing that there is not a lot of uh, users that will need this, but for those that need it, they badly need it. So this is a good thing. Okay, so going to the next one, which is Enhancements, enhancements to change detection preview. And this is for the performance analyzer. I plan to make a video on the performance analyzer. It's going to take me a bit of time because it requires time to do it. But as soon as I have it, I will include this, okay? The next one is drill through button action is now generally available. And they have put a conditional uh, feature on the drill through button. And I don't like this at all. I, I just... Let me show you. Let me show you because this is here. Okay, so here we have um, a report. This is the Northwind data set that we always use. And I have recreated what they did on the video. They explain it in fantastic detail. I mean, there's no point of me to review in the features because they explain it so well on the videos that I will be doing the same as they do. So what she does is she creates a table, which is here, and then it creates a slicer. And then you can pick a an item here on the slicer and then click drill through and it will take you to that page. So these are basically the pages of my report. You have to create it by hand. And then when you click there and then control click because we are on the desktop, it will take you to that particular page. 
should take you. Oh, we're on the overview, sorry. You will go here to drain through, control click, and it'll take us there. Okay. And the thing is that you can click on here, and then you can say, okay, I want to go there, but to the what if page, take me there instead. And then you click drill through, and then it takes you there. Okay. Here's the thing. It's a lot of things I don't like about this. If I see a slicer, if I'm a business user, we're doing this for business users. If I am, see a slicer on a report, I expect to click on something in here that will filter something in my report. And when you are just doing this setup, that's not happening. Nothing is getting filtered. So that slicer is setting the conditions to the button. How on earth are you going to guess that? It's, it's just not intuitive at all. It is, it's, you have to actually see this video or seen the Power BI Steam video, seen the release to actually understand what's going on. And that is not an easy feat, I tell you. So you might click on the button thinking that something is going to happen, it doesn't take you nowhere. Or you can, you know, how, how am I supposed to know that this is filtering? I just don't like it. I just don't like it. I just don't think. I think the idea is good that a read through page will take you to different pages, but to use a slicer to do that, I wouldn't do it. It will confuse your users and they will ring you and say, hey guys, my slicer, your slicer is not working. It's not doing anything, right? The second thing that she demos on the video is that you can have for example, I click on here and then I also want to click for this specific date. And only if I click those two, the read through button will activate. And although, again, the idea is very good and the functionality is definitely needed, the implementation, because what he says is that you click there, you click there, and then the read through button will activate. You'll see her that in her video, very, very clear. How do you know that? How do you know if I just click in here and I know that this is a drill through button, only that is just a fit in itself. So I click here. I know that this normally takes me there. Suddenly I cannot click it. And buttons that you cannot click are very annoying. I'm telling you that. So you can't click it. And she says that, you know, you hover over and then you will see the tooltip. But who waits for a tooltip? This is business users. They have other jobs. They have other things to do than learning how Power BI works. Power BI has to be so intuitive that you can actually click it and know what to do without having to do any learning. Maybe it's a tough requirement, but hey, shoot for the sky, get to the moon. Uh, shoot for the moon, get to the sky, is actually. Anyhow, I just don't think that this implementation is good at all. Uh, I wouldn't use it. I think it is too confusing. And you're going to get a lot of telephone calls saying, hey, your button doesn't work. And then you'll have to figure it out. You can say, okay, you can train your users, but that takes time. And Power BI changes every month. You can't train them every month. They have other things to do. So I don't like this feature actually at all. And I would recommend you to be careful with it, at least. So sorry for that, but it's just not so good. If the, 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 the feature is needed, the implementation is not optimal. Next one, uh, conditionally set the navigation destination. So now the same way that you, we did for read through, you can set a page navigation. So instead of this sending you to a read through page, it will send you to a page. And it's the same idea that you have a, a slicer and then you click in here the page and then you click on here go. Maybe, why? I don't know. I, I, I'm, I'm not sure. Maybe there are cases where that is useful. But again, you have to know that these two are connected to each other. So maybe if you play with the formatting of these, but I don't, I don't know. I, I, be careful with that. Things have to be intuitive for your users. That's the only thing I'm saying. So be very, very careful with that. That takes me to, ladies and gentlemen, one of the features that I actually really, really like, which is the shapes and images can now take you to pages. And oh my God, that is so good. That is so good. Because now you have the possibility to, number one, 
having less objects on your report, which means that it will load faster. <laughs> Number two, less clicks to implement and less clicks to maintain. So that is actually very, very, very good. It will be better performance on your report. So if you have the time, just take the time to change that. So this is a very, very needed feature for sure. And the buttons that now support fill images is also very nice because now you can have images instead of text to show the color, the text, an icon, whatever you want with less trouble if you're good at Photoshop or any image software. So that is nice. The drop shadow is nice, don't abuse it. Don't put shadows everywhere, it just kills the effect of a shadow. But it's actually nice that you can do it without Photoshop. And the filter pane migration, they've been warning us about that. So the composition tree is generally available. This, this is a gem. Oh my gosh. This is something that Mark Russo has been advocating for for the longest time and I am a huge supporter of that too because he is from Europe, I am from Europe and it is a mess. So depending on the regional settings, this might, might surprise you even depending on the, which regional settings that you have. But in Europe, the regional settings for most countries is a um, semicolon and a colon. Well, you know, most blogs, uh, reports and everything is done with an American layout, which is a comma and a dot. And when you're pasting things from the internet, the DAX formulas, you'll see that you get errors everywhere or you have to, you know, you know that is the original setting, so you just have to format it first on Word or anywhere and then paste it in. Now, no matter the original settings that you have, you can set it so the DAX syntax will be always a column and a dot, which is most of the help that you get on the internet is with that notation. And it turns out that it's, I saw it on the Twitter, I, I don't know what it is now. I thought I saved it, but I didn't. So it turns out that Mark Russo is actually one behind that. So go and say hi and thank you to him because this is very good for us in Europe and probably other countries that they're not using the American default notations. So super cool. Now, this web by example, I will give it a, I, I love the web connector, it's absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to give it a go separately on another video uh, later on. And then this data set impact analysis is my third favorite, which is basically when you're publishing a Power BI report, does it do it before or after you publish it? Hopefully before you publish it, it tells you yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, obviously, before you publish it, it will tell you if how many data sets, reports, uh, dashboards use this specific report as a data set, as a source. So how many things you are going to break <laughs> you actually first publish without checking first. Really nice feature, really nice feature. Okay, so now you heard uh, my thoughts about the Power BI desktop update. Um, really would love to hear your comments, especially about the things that I don't like, because maybe I'm missing something. So if you have a different opinion, just let me know and why, and just convince me, because I want to like it, but <laughs> I haven't found a way to do it, actually. <laughs>